Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Mm. Sucking that baby down this morning. Uh, today is Monday, November 22nd, Thanksgiving week here in the U.S., often referred to as a favorite holiday by many Americans. It's like all the fun with very little of the pressure of, say, Christmas. No, um, no angst involved, no religious services to attend. Maybe some people do, but um, yeah. I, and I know I've been mentioning that I'm looking forward to it. Traveling tomorrow, go see family. So this is the only podcast for the week, unless I talk my mom into doing a podcast with me. We could try. She has before. So, um, so yeah, I'm having a regular work day today. Uh, did get started on Gray Magic on Friday. And... There was a little happy dance there for use on audio only. Um, yeah, so nose to the grindstone on that book. I am going to try to work on it uh, over the week, upcoming week here. We'll see how I do. I only got like 495 words on Friday, but that felt um, okay for what I was um, trying to do, you know, um, it's always, uh, I try to give myself a little bit of slack when I'm first ramping up into the book. And, um, yeah, Friday ended up being kind of a, a wonky day anyway for, for other reasons. So, but that was okay. Um, I was very happy to have gotten the novella done. I've gotten reads back from four people and everybody loves the story. So... Very exciting. And I think I'm going to call it Familiar Winter Magic, uh, which was actually a suggestion from Corrine after she said that she was not helpful with titles at all, that she wasn't good with them. And then she suggested either Familiar Magic or Winter Magic. And I was like, oh, how about Familiar Winter Magic? And then I spent uh, a bunch of time Yesterday, I had a very laid back Sunday, which was really nice. Uh, spent a lot of time in my armchair reading, which was awesome. And uh, and I also sat with my um, my Bartlett's quotations and synonym finder, uh, trying to find another title. And I at <laughs> the after like a couple of hours of like chasing different lines of poetry and synonyms and other things I came back to it was almost as if I like discovered it. I was like hmm how about familiar winter magic and I was like well wait <laughs> that was the exact same thing I could have just called it good on Friday or Saturday or whenever the hell it was that Karina and I talked about it so um, there'll be a snippet in the newsletter if you are not signed up for the newsletter uh, you could be uh, I will put that sign up link in the show notes. I should probably just have it in there anyway. So, um, also cover reveal for Gray Magic. And today I am going to have the Come to Jesus meeting with, uh, with Dorinda and figure out what we can push the fire of the frost release date to. Uh, reader, it will not be. December 2nd. Although my story is done and Amanda's story is done. Grace would have been done. She says she would have, but she's taking advantage of the extra time. So who can blame her? So, um, yeah, we'll see what, where Dorinda falls out on that. And, um, we'll announce that release date later today. Uh, Probably, and, and we'll have it in the newsletter also. So, but yeah, now my story's done. Woo, 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 woo. And now I can uh, 
<laughs> I, I've been watching, I went back and started rewatching Ted Lasso from the beginning. So now I'm like doing the Diamond Dogs. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Um, bum, 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 bum. so, so yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm pushing back the release date on that, but sometimes life happens, unfortunately. And all of my things are getting pushed back, but such is life. And no word yet on the submission. So that's, it's kind of, uh, I don't know if you haven't heard before Thanksgiving, are you really going to hear until January? That's always the question. I did, however, sign the contract. I think I told you guys for the audiobooks for Sorcerer's Moon. So I get money for that. We like money. And I don't know. <laughs> I wonder what else. Um, Dark Wizard audiobook is coming along. Um, so yeah, I had a busy Saturday. Actually, I had a fairly laid back weekend. Um, I had, I did, did give a workshop at nine on Saturday morning online and it went till like 1030, something like that. And then I had a CIFO board meeting at 11 and that went till like 1230. But after that, I was fancy free. And that was pretty nice, pretty nice to be fancy free. Um, and then, like I said yesterday, I spent a lot of time reading. So I'm finally getting to this place where I'm a little better at it taking time off. <laughs> I know I keep talking about this, but you know, like when I think it's so easy, David and I were talking about this, so easy to get in this pattern of just like pushing things forward all the time, working on things all the time. And when I have free time, I feel like, okay, well, this is time I could be working on this thing. Um, and I'm really very consciously trying to like, if I have a day like Sunday or you know, like Saturday afternoon where I had no obligations and yesterday when I had nothing scheduled to simply um, be lazy or I don't know, read, not, not program myself, not have a bunch of things that I need to do. Um, I did end up, like getting online after at around three o'clock because I had finished reading a book, a beta read for someone. And so I got online and went in, you know, I checked social media and my emails and all of those things and input the comments and did that for like two hours. And then I called it good for the day. Um, but David and I were talking about how, it, you, you know, because I was telling him, I, was, I felt like I was trying to get better at this. And he was like, you know, remember the early days of our relationship? Because he and I started dating in 91. And he said, you know, sometimes we just sort of spend the whole weekend just hanging out. And I was like, I know. And I think some of that was being pre-internet. I think that, you know, because you couldn't really work on stuff unless you actually left your house and went somewhere else, right? You know, you, you had to go to the library to research stuff unless you had the books at home, but you know, and, and of course we had lots of them books at home. Those of us who are book at home people, but you know, otherwise, like if there was something you wanted to research, you had to go to the library or if there was something you wanted to work on, you had to go to your office. Um, and so it was very easy while you were at home on the weekends to simply not do those work things. You know, you would read and, <laughs> and hang out. And so the internet has brought many advantages because, you know, now we can work from home much more easily and, you know, research things on our phone at a moment's notice, but it also creates this ability to work constantly. And I think that that's, um, something that I'm really learning I have to fight against. So fighting the good fight to, to do nothing. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I remember noticing around 2007, 2009 that I wasn't 
reading nearly as much as I had been. And I had put it down to um, writing. That was when I really started writing. And I do think there's some truth to that, that when you start writing, it scratches a lot of the same itch that reading does. And, and you end up reading less unless you make a conscious effort. And I, I really ha- do make a conscious effort to read. But um, I think the other piece of it is, is like, that's when I got on the internet. What that, or more importantly, when I got on social media, because I think I joined Twitter in like 2009 and Facebook in like 2008. And, you know, it's, um, it takes up a lot of that. I mean, it was really great at first. And I think in some ways it's still great that I made so many friends that I would not have otherwise made. But, um, you know, and so it's always going to be incredibly valuable for that. I mean, my assistant's in the Netherlands and I met her entirely because of social media. And I have a lot of friends that I met through social media. But yeah, yeah. Trying to stay offline and do things like, like read. Oh, those are, those are big. So one of the books I started reading after I finished uh, my my beta read, I have um, a bunch of samples on my Kindle, right? You guys know I do this. I have a bunch of samples lined up of books that people are talking about or that have been recommended one way or another. Some of, Sometimes I've liked the full book if it was like a free download. I'll, you know, and so I'll periodically, like when I finish something, I'll start scrolling through all those things and try the samples and see if I like them enough to buy the book. And (laughs) so I started reading this one that has been out for a little while. And it's one of those ones that has the beautiful, beautiful cover. And I've tried to, I think I tried to read it before, although I think I may have confused it with something else. Um, Grace and I got in an argument about it because I said, you know, I tried to read that one and I didn't like it at all. And she goes, oh, well, maybe that means I will love it. Maybe I'm exact reverse taste of yours. She says these things just to annoy me. And it's only because there's one book. There is one book that she and I disagree on that she loves and I think is a hot mess. And so now she now she has to bring that up and throw it in my face all the time because it is this very popular, very successful book. And she's like, you are the only person who thinks this book is a hot mess. And I'm like, okay, I still think it's a hot mess. Um, <laughs> so now she likes to do this thing of saying, well, remember that book. So maybe if you hate this book, I'll love it. Um, but do you think she's gotten around to reading it? I bet you know. Anyway. Um, I, I began to suspect, cause she's like, this looks like my catnip. This looks like your catnip. And I'm like, I know. So anyway, I do think I mixed it up with another book. So I've started reading it and, um, so far, I mean, it's all right. It's, um, it's, it's very well written. I'm not sure it's going to be my catnip. Um, so far the sample has not swayed me, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> What's funny is, is like, there's this trope. You guys know how I like get annoyed about the not like other girls thing trope. Well, here, this is a part of this. I, I don't know. We need like an, um, an umbrella and this is like a subset of this or like the Venn diagram. I don't know what it would be, but this trope of girls liking to wear pants and finding dresses uncomfortable. You guys know what I mean? So like the character in this book, um, she dresses as a guy because it's not safe for women to be out by themselves, which, you know, okay, that's a whole nother thing. And I've written in a whole essay about it. You know, like, why do you assume sexual peril for for your culture and your fantasy world? You know, it's big. It doesn't have to be that way. Not every fantasy world has to be a rape culture, but aside from that, uh, so she's dressing as a man and I was fine with that, but she makes this point where she says um, to the guy who will be the obvious love interest that, uh, that trousers are far more comfortable. Have you ever tried a corset? And it's like, and this is where I did the record scratch. I'm like, okay, first of all, there's something in between corset and trousers. Okay. (laughs) In fact, you don't put a corset on the same part of your body as a trousers. So 
if you're, you know, like if you're taking the GRE or something, if you're trying to do one of these logic comparisons, this is a false, false comparison. I mean, I know that we are not taking the GRE, but, but my point stands, right? That if you're going to correlate pieces of clothing, you can't say that wearing trousers is far more comfortable than wearing a corset because it is entirely possible to wear a dress without wearing a corset, right? So then, but this is like a whole thing, right? And I even got in an argument on a panel once about this. And I think one of the other women on the panel actually got angry with me. She seemed angry. And I, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to be obnoxious. I don't try to be obnoxious, you guys. But she was talking about how men's clothing is so much more comfortable than women's clothing and that pants are more comfortable than dresses. And I said, and I disagreed. I said, I, I like wearing dresses. I am someone who wears dresses a lot. Um, you know, especially summertime sundresses are my go-to outfit. And, uh, <laughs> and she was really wanting to take this position of everybody knows that pants are more comfortable than dresses. And I was like, no, I, I said, how come there's this thing this is like another one of those memes where like some of the male authors talk about being pantsless, right? You know, that one of the great things about being a writer is that you can work pantsless and the guys like to come home and take off their pants and I don't know, wander around in their underoos or boxers or whatever. I don't know. Now you can picture your favorite, your favorite male author in underoos and uh, Hopefully you know what that is. I don't think that's that dated, is it? Maybe it is. Anyway, <laughs> you know, so they, they talk about this, like working pantsless. And it's funny because I see some women authors like chiming in being like, oh yeah, yeah, working pantsless. And I'm, I always have a little bit of a uh, side eye on that kind of thing, because sometimes I feel like the women are like trying to be in with the good old boys, you know, and being like, Oh yes, I'm like you guys, I love to work pantsless. And it's like, well, isn't like wearing a sundress pretty much exactly the same thing as a guy walking around in his t-shirt and his underoos. I mean, that's, you know, a little bit of a length hem difference, but it's like if, if a woman wants to work pantsless, you know, a, a nice sundress or a maxi dress or a muumuu, it's getting you to the same place, right? Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. So this whole thing about, oh, you know, I just don't know what it is that women are associating with wearing dresses. Like, you know, oh, well, you can't climb a tree wearing a dress. Well, you can. Yeah, you, you can if you don't care if anyone sees your underwear, you know, and it's like, why do you care if someone sees your underwear if you're all that liberated, you know, instead it's like, it's back to that sexual peril thing that like, if you're wearing a dress, you know, that you're somehow in peril. Um, I don't think it has to do with comfort. I can understand if it's associated with a kind of femininity that you want to distance yourself from, but then is it that misogyny? I mean, if you're disdaining something entirely because it has a feminine connotation, isn't that misogyny? I mean, I'm, I'm all for wear pants. If you want to wear, wear whatever the fuck you want show your underwear if you want. Um, but don't tell me it's because wearing pants is more comfortable than wearing a corset. So end of sermon, end of rant. And, and, I guess I'm going to leave you with this uh, for Thanksgiving week. Be thankful that you can wear whatever the fuck you want to wear. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say any more. I'll remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the Frolic Media Podcast Network. And you will find other podcasts that you love at frolic.media slash podcasts. And I will talk to you all on um, in a week, week from today. Hope you all, if you celebrate Thanksgiving this week, hope it is marvelous and wonderful. And uh, hope that you all get to have some time uh, just relaxing and not pushing things forward for a little bit. You all take care. Bye-bye.